Okay, okay, okay. It's your boy EB, success after lockdown. What's we happening? in the building, man, with no other than my boy B.O. in the building, man. This is what, what this is the creators, man. Success after lockdown. We started this. Yes, uh, how you doing? How you doing, my brother? How you oh, doing, man? man? How it's you a been, blessing, man? man? Congratulations, man. Yes, yes. Let's let's same let's, here, let's same get here. This, man. Let's get this. You know? historical fantastic story out yeah 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 we listen man we um we working on this computer stuff <laughs> trial and never right now yeah. i was thinking i said damn I, I keep forgetting you came home a little after me now <laughs> that was the passwords right? and all these gadgets and <laughs> yeah. stuff you know yeah man. no nah, question. but seriously all, all doing same man. congratulations man i'm so proud of you man you know i was there yeah, same here in the, man. you know what i'm saying in the in the trenches man where you you know what i'm saying where you brought this thought out to me you know and i'm, I'm just glad to see that it's uh materialized man I'm, I'm 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 extremely proud of you my brother no question same here man same here man that's i mean listen let's get right to it man i want i want to start from the beginning you know the beginning of bo where you grew up at where you from let let the audience that our family know man where you grew up at two-parent home you know how was life growing up with wherever it was with borough you know just talk about things man let's have this come let's have the conversation for the peoples well okay so yeah i'm originally from uh new york city uh first was uh born in uh manhattan women's hospital i believe 1968 you know um you know my mother and father and uh they were married at the time and then they separated in the 70s you know you know things happen and uh you know my mom's raised me i was living in the bronx for like you know maybe like when i was like five to six years so i had a little bit of that bronx element in me you okay, know bx 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 yes i lived over there on brian avenue you know what i'm saying over the right off of tremont and stuff and then we just moved to Manhattan, you know. We moved to uh, Washington Heights, you know. It was a it was a different atmosphere at that time, you know. It was a little more, uh, you know, snowy. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, a little more snowy, but it was a mixture of everything, you know. It was a lot of Dominicans migrating over there at the time, and of course, you know, up there, you know, Washington Heights, but you know, and they also called it Sugar Hill, you know, so things right. of that nature. HBO, you know, HBO too was going HBO down. Harlem and Bronx right. only facts. <laughs> That's right no question all right so like you know what i mean so how was how was it growing up man like you know well i grew up in a single parent home you know my mom's raised me and uh you know it was a, it was it was a you know single woman and you know it was a struggle for her you know what i'm saying she had to uh you know take care of me and my brother so it wasn't easy so it really that that balance of having that foundation of you know father and mother wasn't there so she was yeah. the mother but also the father so uh at an early age we learned was you know what i'm saying we you know she instilled in us certain responsibilities because she had to go out there and work and she had to take care of us so that left that left me and my brother to like fend for ourselves you know yeah. so in a way you know so you know there, there was positivity about that but then there was also negativity about that you mm -hmm. know because you know you still have to be like and you know growing up you have to be like to be monitored you know like i said she was out there working so there was times where you know what i'm saying she wasn't watching us you know and growing up in the 70s and in the 80s and into the 90s into my adulthood it was it was you know it was different like you're saying it, it's different to compare to now you know what yeah, I mean? challenging very challenging right to so say the least. Know, i was young you know what i'm saying i was in you know uh, uh middle school the grade school and things of that nature so you know i didn't really see what's going on. i knew a little bit of you know i mean not so far as much as the street but i was the average kid playing stickball playing baseball you know what i'm saying playing football right. basketball things of that nature you know going to school in the 70s early 70s the, the breakdancing era which started you know what i mean things of that nature you know so i always i always like to ask i always like to ask um you know anybody that i'm sit down with and talk to like I remember back growing up in the Bronx, BX, BX all the way. You know, I remember growing up, and there were positive influences and negative. There were more negative than positive, but there was those positive influences. And I like to give an example, like, um, like 
a brother I grew up with named Skip, they moved off the block when we were young and he came back and he was Muslim mm -hmm. to try to get us to get off the streets. That's, you know what I mean? Because we was, we was already in the knee deep, 80, right. 85 on the corner right. selling weed. And he used to always come and preach to us. It was so, it was so bad that when he come, we used to all run and hide from him. But that was that positive influence. That was that self-accusing spirit. That was that God, that G-O-D for me that was trying to get us out of those circumstances at an early age that we never listened to. So right. I'm I'm asking you, did do you ever have any examples of any positive influences and what were they back when you was young growing up man well i remember growing up right again like you know what i'm saying we were just you know being the average kid just running around the streets you know what i'm saying playing uh you know basketball football baseball but yeah there was things that were going on in the neighborhood like you know that was the dope era i remember well, i was very young i remember the nikki bonds era like you had the monarch on 100 and in uh, 58th Street, you know what I'm saying? And I remember hearing about Shamecca getting killed in there. That was Nikki Barnes's girl, you know what I'm saying, at the time. But I was very, very young, didn't really understand it, but I was very young. So you had those dynamics of, you know what I'm saying, the drug environment that was in the neighborhood. Um, the positive influence, I would say, would be there was an individual, right? And he was, uh, his name was, we just called him Blue but he was an assembly man. Like I didn't know about politics at the time, but I knew he was very important because I remember somebody got murdered in the donut shop around my way between 157th and 158th and cops was around, you know, everybody's just standing out. And, yeah. you know, cause he, you know, blue always used to say hi to everybody, you know what I mean? All to the kids and all that, you know, what you doing, yo, y'all playing baseball. You used to see us out there, whatever the case is, but I didn't really know how important he was until one day, I know he said something to the officer and he just walked right in. So right then and there, I knew that he was in, you know, an important man, but as more and more as the relationship between us grew with him, you know, I see my brothers and stuff like that, my other friends, I knew that, you know what I'm saying, like he would try and get us like summer jobs and he would try, you know what I'm saying, things of that nature. Right, right. So that what I could say that was a positive. Like I said, I really know about politics, but I know he was somebody really important in the neighborhood Absolutely. that was trying to do like positive things for as far as like the, the kids, like myself when I was a kid at the time. Absolutely. No question. I, I think that we all have a lot of similarities, man, in life growing up, man. Wherever good, yeah, like at, you said, the good and bad was, was You know, was the good and bad is always there, man. Every Everybody I speak to, you know, I might have had one exception that said they never had no positive influence, but I beg to differ. You know, I think that, you know, you just didn't see it at that time. Right, you know, right. Like some of us can now identify it, you know, right. um, because we definitely don't see it at that time that, you know, from where our, our state of mind was, you know, and the way we grew up, you know. Um, so, so, um, so the streets, man, what led you, you know, to the streets, man, and, and, and how, you know, and just, if you could, if you, if you could just expound on when you first went to prison, when you first went to jail, like going to prison, how was that like for you? Oh, the streets, I got to get started getting into the streets. Like, what you know, like, as again, I'm growing up with my peers and uh, we just started hanging out and it went from like smoking weed and, you know, drinking beer and things of that nature and just hanging out. You know what I mean? And sometimes that, that, that time is, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you know, you, you, you intoxicated or whatever the case is, or are you really trying to, you know, you really trying to go to school or whatever you want to get some munchies or something like that. And so, you know, so a lot of the time was consumed in that, but at the same time, older peers, like it was an older peer that, you know what I'm saying? May rest in peace. We used to call him, you know, Sean Jughead. He was a little older than us, but he was around dudes that was getting money in the streets, but he would, you know, he would hang out with us. You know what I'm saying? So us uh, seeing him, you know what I'm saying, getting dipped, getting fresh and things like that. And they, so, you know, we started getting attracted to that kind of lifestyle. And that was really my, he was called, sort of like my introduction into that lifestyle. You know, he was over there at the bar at the time before, you know what I'm saying, crack came out. He was selling the 50 Coke, you know, the 50 bottles of Coke and $20 bottles of Coke. He worked for somebody, you know, things of that structure. So it was like, you know what I'm saying? That was, the attraction to that lifestyle and that was 
to for me and a, and a couple of my peers the introduction into that lifestyle where we started you know started hustling and yeah. started selling selling weed I first started selling weed you know what i'm saying out there on the corners and then then that's when i started hearing about crack you know what i'm saying yo they selling cracks downtown they're selling crack like i'm like yo what the hell is that then i started to find out what it was it was you know what i'm saying it was cooked up cocaine and things like that so we started hustling like that on the corners and shit. so we talking about maybe going into my like maybe 17 16 17 years old you know absolutely yeah yeah so 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 going um, to the rooftop you know what i'm saying no question a little bit of nickel, you know what I'm saying a little bit of you know, money you know what i mean going down there you know what i'm saying things that's, in that that's club, so, you know, no seeing that lifestyle and stuff yeah man. yeah 371 for those that don't know about 371 and bx you used to go gamble in that in that spot but um <laughs> that eventually led me to like going out of town so I, I went out of town when i was 17 years old you know what i'm saying i went upstate Absolutely. i was out you know what i'm saying i i met somebody from around my my neighborhood my uh one of my one of my boys arnold he had a cousin and he came around and you know what i mean and he he was like yo you know I, you guys you know you guys could get some get, get some crack you know what i'm saying yo you take it up there and y'all can sell it up there for such and such more than what we selling He's like 70, so I grabbed one of my boys up, you know what I mean? And we went up there, and actually we went, like, you know, marketing, as you would say, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So we had one first went to White Plains. Dudes came out. They wasn't having it. Look, we was trying to set up shop, you know, like like you see yeah, in the movie yeah. Belly and stuff like that, you yeah. know? And then yeah, it didn't fun. work out. You know, dudes in the habit was, you know, then we went to Ossining, and then we landed in Peekskill, and that's when I – you know, really started getting my hustle on and, you know, making a whole lot of money that I had never seen before, you know, because the yeah, crack was like just a different era. So then that led me to my first time getting locked up mm. when I was 17. You know, I caught my first, you know what I'm saying, drug offense. Mm. And then from there, it kind of like led on. So I kind of like, you know, probation at first, first felony as a YO, you know still yeah, yeah. not you know what i'm saying realizing what you know what i'm saying the negative what, the, what we're what, being set up for right what i was being set up for and what you know what i'm saying this system was like okay they were slowly more and more putting the shackle behind on my ankles and i didn't realize it at the time you know i, I dropped out of high school you know what i mean i never yeah. went back to school you know i didn't really like the system the way they was teaching and stuff like that so again more and more the street started you know Again, towards my way and most, then of, I most of our stories like ahead. around 1991 i caught my first i caught my first state bid you know mm -hmm. and it was a short bid again drug beef because i was a hustler you know i was making money and things of that nature you know i caught a drug sale you know things of that nature and i ended up getting you know what i'm saying my first bid did learn my lesson went up went through the state you know what i'm saying was like okay this is this is state prison and stuff like that ended up coming home you know chilled out for a little while, right yeah. chilled out for a little while you know what i'm saying not really thinking about you know you know what had happened or, or the effects of you know my uh choices and then you know i went right back into the game again yeah. you know yeah. what i mean and we, we, yes and i got another bit same thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. still not still out there trying to get that money and stuff like that boom you know this time it was you know two to four you know what i mean still not you know you know not realizing you know okay all right i'll be home in such and such time you know i'm seeing dudes going up north but i didn't see dudes going going up north for the long and nobody in there sit me down and say matter of fact that's where i met you know what i'm saying on my second one i met um uh uh Dao, sir d because okay, i remember okay we were all okay. in there big up the sir d that. Yes, no yes, yes, yeah i remember i remember him you know and he had caught his body but he didn't really like you know like nobody said yo this is yo i'm going up to do 25 years you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know in the same situation you know so i ended up going home and then again getting back into that game you know what i'm saying then i ended up catching this bit here where i ended up doing you know 23 to life you know okay yeah we go and we're gonna get into that a little bit too man just that transition um and you you know uh after you being sentenced before we do i just want to point out i got an issue with arnold's because you just spoke about arnold no right arnold, was a, arnold was a friend of mine He's yeah a, he I, yeah, I had a, yeah yeah and i had a friend named arnold too 
that's what's crazy to me. I know they might not be the same brothers, right? This Arnold I know is from the Bronx, born and raised in the Bronx. He's a big drug dealer. You heard? Mm -hmm. he, we we looked up to him. He he introduced us to DC. So okay. I was in DC in 86. You heard the end of 85, 86 is the first time I went out of town. He he came to the block like, yo, y'all want to go out of town? And he took us to DC from DC. We was in Baltimore right after DC. You heard? So yeah. and his name is Arnold. They call him wise now. He in the industry. You know, he he did some fed time and came home. Heard he doing good now. I ain't seen him in a while, but but yeah, when you said Arnold, that just gave me a flashback. Everything okay. like our lives is, is is built with so much similarities. Like just right. coming from the streets, I'm talking about the five boroughs right now, and and not only the five boroughs, other different states. You know what I'm saying? Rochester. All of our lives is is with a lot. You know, built with a lot of similarities. You know, um, that we and can talk what, about. And that's what the game structured, right? So it's structured like you know what I mean. Like if you if you wanted to go and make a bigger profit, you know you could go out to these other, you know what I'm saying, states, you know, where the distribution of drugs wasn't, you know what I'm saying, as big as it was in New York, you know, That's so right. yeah. That, you that, know, $10, all, all, that $10 piece of, of right. crack in, 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 in Baltimore was $30, $40, you know what I mean? <laughs> Easy. $10, <laughs> compared to yeah, $10, you know, right, you know what so what I mean? profit margin, right, No exactly. question, you know, so, so look, we, we was on it, like we out of here period you know but um so like if you could share with us just that moment what i mean what was your mindset when you were sentenced and received all this time if you can elaborate a little on that when i received all that time it was like a like, like and what did you receive how much if you could talk about it 20, I, I received 23 to life you know for kidnapping and assault right so um when i received that sentence right it was you know in reference to drug related right so it just was like they knocked me off my i'm gonna hold you it knocked me off my feet i i, I caught the l it was 23 23 years of life you know what i'm saying That's so true. i was just like wow you know and i was like first i was like in denial you know what i mean like oh right, you know i'm gonna try and get this back you know i had a couple of coins or whatever the case may be you know put the appeal process in i really wasn't trying to accept the time i don't think anybody that gets that time is trying to accept that time like That's okay right. unless you unless you take the time and say okay when you cop out then you know you're accepting at that time i didn't cop out you know what i mean yeah yeah so i was That's still right. in like disbelief you know what i mean and it was like okay here we go again and I remember taking the trip back upstate and I was like, wow, I hit Elmira. I hit Elmira reception. So in Elmira, when you go down, it's like, if you ever remember that movie from uh, Bad, Bad Boys and shit with Sean Penn, you know, and you're going down the long corridor, you see the big gate and all that. You see everybody screaming and stuff like that. And it was crazy because I remember I had seen this brother that I was with on my last bit, his name from Pee Wee, shout out to Pee Wee, you know, Vince Huntington from uh, Syracuse. And he seen me, he was like, yo, what's up, what's up, yo? And I'm like, yo, what's up? And he was like, you know, what's going on? I'm like, he was, I was like, yo, what's up? He was, he was on a violation. I was like, yo, I got a new one. And I told him my numbers, he was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so was, don't mean to cut you off, but I remember yeah. the numbers, 89B2139. I yeah. was in the L in 89, man, in reception. Yeah. So you know how it is when you walk down that corridor. That's right. That's so, right. You know, so it kind of like, like, I'm like saying like, damn, he got a violation. And I got a fresh one and I got large numbers. But I just saw the expression on his face. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, give me, here's my handle. Here's my information. Because he knew I was getting ready to do a long stretch. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So this you could continue to elaborate on that. So you know, Just, uh, I stayed there. You know, that feeling saying? for you, man. You, know, I, I, I stayed there. At reception and uh, at that time, you know, jail was still, you know what I'm saying, packed at the time. They didn't stop. You know what I'm saying, mass. You know what I'm saying. The the the, the, the downsides of the mass incarceration wasn't into effect yet. So prison was still was at its all time height. It was at his all time high. And what happened is that they didn't have a lot of room for Max. There was no room for Max because we were still in the Pataki era, you know, because his thing was like, you know, he was pro incarceration because it was economic mobility for, you know what I'm saying, for these uh, upstate pilgrims, you know. 
Yeah, I'm gonna couldn't even get home. You couldn't pilgrim. even get home on parole for, right. for, for, when when you go to parole one, two, three times because he had an unwritten rule. Don't right. let him out. Ahead, so dude. we had to wait, but they were opening up this uh new new jail called Five Points, and it was like, well, it was a super max, you know. And I, of course, since me having those numbers, I clap, you know what I'm saying? I was put under that classification. So we had to wait until five points opened up. And so I left El Mine. We went there, and it was like a super max. All I can tell you is five points was like originally it was supposed to be a shoe box. You know, if anybody's been in the shoe, which is solitary confinement, it, but the well, I think the federal government was like, "Yo, listen, no, we're not gonna fund no more shoes." You know what I'm saying? Either you owe because they were asking for more money. You know what I'm saying to open up more prisons, and the feds was like, "No, you take the you take this shoe and you open it up, and they made it a population." And when we got there, we opened up the jail. It actually was. You know, it had five buildings, you know, but only we opened up the first building. And all I could tell you was like the movie Face Off. It was cameras mm -hmm. everywhere. It was like a supermax. Mm -hmm. And it was segregated. You know what I mean? Everybody had their own yard and things like that. Again, because it was supermax. It was a lot of dudes with a lot of time. So I ended up starting my bid off there. Mm, no question. And and so, so in that, um again, too, because I remember when I received that 25 years of life and I went up and like I, I was talking to another brother um, earlier today about this, but a lot of us, we take on this, um, this transition differently at different times in our life. You know, um, some people never going to get it. Some people get it 10, 15, 20 years down the line while they're in prison. Some people, you know what I mean? Some people get it right away. That ability, very, yeah. Very, yeah, very few, you know, very few get it right away because we got to go through some things, man. We got to go through that, you know, the hard knock life, you know, <laughs> learn mm -hmm. the hard way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, you know, so like, um, what was it for you? Like, what, what slowed you down? if any at any time while you was incarcerated while you was while you was going through that growth and development because whether you stay in the yard or or the gym you still got to go through a growth and development you know what i mean uh, uh, okay so at that time right you know i had got knowledge itself you know shout out to you know what i'm saying the god shot mecca he from out of mecca he gave me knowledge itself and uh peace to the gods and uh in elmira so you know i had like my little awakening there having that knowledge itself do you know and so he was sort of like you know a mentor again like he gave me knowledge itself but i was still mm -hmm. sort of like in denial about the situation because i had like a little bit of coins and i'm like okay you know what i'm saying oh i don't you know i went to trial and you know what i mean there's no such thing as a perfect child i'm gonna get this time back but you know, so I didn't really take it serious. I really wasn't going into the law library. You know what I mean? You know, I got a job. I was working in the mess hall, you know, and, you know, I was just, you know, doing my bid, waiting, you know what I'm saying, to, to get out of there and things of that nature. But that didn't happen, you know? You know, my my my, my, my pennies kind of got stolen out there when I was in the town, you know what I'm saying? And things happened. So I was never able to get the, I, I was never able to get the paid lawyer and, you know, and so I had to end up getting a legal egg lawyer. And, you know, like I said, I really wasn't that knowledgeable about the law, you know, but I'm like, okay, things look good or whatever the case is. And I'm like, all right, they're going to they're gonna set me up to do this appeal and hopefully I'll get his time back or whatever the case may be. In the meantime, you know, like I'm, I'm bitten, you know what I'm saying? I'm with the guards, you know what I'm saying? I'm conversing, you know what I mean? You know, in five points, you know, you see the things, you see the... You see the, the 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 negative aspects, you know, the the gambling, the, the the three cardinal rules that you live by, no no drugs, no gambling, no no messing with no boys, things like that. And you you see all that, you see the gang violence and stuff like that, you know. But you know, I was just staying instructive, staying positive and you know, staying on a on a you know, just doing what I got to do, to, you know, saying so these lawyers can handle it. But you know, I was always one for um in reference to fighting for, you know what I'm saying, like injustice, like, you know, like with the police and stuff like that. Like, you know, I was just talking to my girl. I'm like, yo, listen, you know, I was the type of person, like if I see like the police jumping on somebody, be it blood, be it 
be it Latin King, be it Christian, be it Muslim, being white, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to jump in or vice versa. So I always, you know what I'm saying? You know, because one thing we had in common, we had green on, you know? So I remember when things was going right, you know, I ended up getting into a ride in five points and stuff like that, you know, things with the police and I ended up going to the box and I ended up getting six months. So I leave five points and I end up going to upstate box and uh which is a whole different world <laughs> it's a whole different world to the shoe you Facts. know <laughs> three bunkies in there you know and uh, one was in there for you know two years one was in there for like six months and then the other one was in there he i was on my way out when he first came through so i ended up leaving the shoe and going to comstock great meadows and i landed there so when I landed there, you know, I started seeing brothers that knew me, you know what I'm saying, for five points and things of that nature. And they pulled me into um industry. So I started working industry because I had got my I had got my GED on my last bid, you know. So I ended up going to, you know what I'm saying, getting my GED. And again, I'm waiting to hear from my appeal. So my appeal gets shot down. So when my appeal gets shot down, that's when I was like, oh, this is, you know, so I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to put in the leave application to the, to the state, to the highest court. That gets shot down. After that, that was it. After that, then that's when I realized, yo, this shit is real and you're going to have to do this time. Of course, you know what I'm saying? I didn't accept that at that time, you know, and I started getting on my legal beagle. You know, I started being in the law library. I started studying things like that, going to industry, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. And, and and you know, just doing my bid accordingly and trying to get back because I left two kids out there. I had a daughter and I had a son. So, you know, I was kind of like ashamed and upset. And it was, you know, eating me up that I left responsibilities out there because I said that I would never be like that, how my father was, you know what I'm saying? And I ended up doing what my father did, you know what I mean? So that would really, when we talk about, you know, it, it used to mess with me a lot. Mm, that's you know? another similarity right there. You know, another similarity, uh, you know, so it messed me up a lot and it became sort of like, it became like my drive, you know what I'm saying? To like, I got to get back to them. I got to get back to them, you know, because I had these children, you know what I'm saying? And they need a father in their life. Like, you know, I didn't want to, again, I didn't want to do what happened with my father. So that became my drive to like really not get in trouble. And I'm not going to hold you. I, you know, I say that, but, you know, I got caught up. You know what I'm saying? I was doing negative things in there. You know what I mean? I still had that mentality. You know, I still had that street mentality. I was up, I was in there hustling. I was I was selling drugs and all that in there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I still wasn't, you know what I mean? I still didn't get it, you know? Yeah. So... I ended up in Comstock. I did, I think, six or eight years in there. But now I just started meeting brothers and stuff like that, dudes that had 50, dudes that, my, you know what I mean? I ended up running into an old friend that I grew up with named Pacalito. Shout out to Pacalito. You know what I'm saying? Jose, you know what I'm saying? We went to He's Down with the Wild Cowboys. So I remember I was in the mess hall, and I heard somebody say, yo, Gil. And I'm like, well, somebody calling me Gil, he know me from school. <laughs> and I'm yeah. looking around and I see him, you know, I'm like, oh, shit, Jose. You know, shit. So we go out to the yard. He was like, yo, I said, last time I seen him, he was around the way working. I'm like, yo, what's up? You? you know what I mean? He says, yo, so he shows me his tattoo. He was like, yo, you ever heard of the Wild Cowboys? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I said, and he showed me. I said, you got caught up with that? He was like, yeah, I got 100 years. I was like, whoa. And remember, I went to school with him. Like we was yeah. in grade school to junior high school to high school, you know. So I kind of like, even though I had that twenty three, I was like, wow, you know. I kind of like felt. It. I'm like, man, you got a hundred, you know. Yeah. So you know, we spent the yard, and you know, what I mean, he was like, yo, you know, you good, you know. what I'm saying, come over to E Block, you make it over there, you know. What I mean, I ended up going over there, E Block, and stuff like that, and we just started talking and building. And he was telling me, and he was telling me, he was like, yeah, although I was getting all this money, but I was just doing dumb stuff i was doing killing senseless killings that shouldn't have happened so at the same time i'm listening like yo you know i could have been at that level i could have went to that level you know because that's what that game does to you you know what i'm saying you know where you can do those senseless things without thinking you know without rationally thinking and he regrets that you know what i mean because you know he's got a hundred years 
So, you know, we ended up, so he was like building, but he was also sort of like a mentor to me because he showed me how to move. Like five points was a new jail and stuff like that, but you know, Comstock is seasoned, you know what I mean? So I know how to move a little more and a little better, you know what I'm saying, in there, you know what I mean? So, and then ended up leaving, you know, uh, Comstock and ended up going to CAC, to the Kaksaki. You know, totally, <laughs> Kaksaki is, is a totally different spot. You know what I mean? All I can tell you was like a, a mixture of Attica and Elmira's. And that's how it was, you know? They put hands and feet on you. You know, first thing I got there, I asked them why they, hey, why they ain't have bread in the mess. So they, they, they threw me up on the wall and roughed me up, you know? So, and then, you know, I ended up catching a, um, I ended up catching a bullshit ticket. You know, and I ended up beating the ticket. You know, I go up there, I'm in there, you know what I'm saying? And I ended up going in the industry, you know, chilling out and things like that. And then I ended up landing in Easton. And that's when I got to Easton, you know, which was quote unquote at the time, happy nap or whatever. And I saw that it was a different environment. You know, it was more, uh, so to say, productive and constructive. A lot of individuals, a lot of individuals that had a time, that had time in there, or a lot of individuals, you know what I mean? And it was a lot of program, it was a lot of program. At that time, I when I got to Eastern, I think I had like 10 years in, but I only had like one program. I only had like my law library certification. So there was a not like there wasn't a lot of programs up there up north, you know, more so down down the eastern. They had college. You know what I'm saying? They just had an abundance of programs down there. They had Pace. They had the Lifers. They had Latinos Unidos. They had, you know, say so, you know, it was a lot of things to get into. You know, they had brothers teaching business. They had brothers teaching you, you know, how to, you know what I'm saying, tech. If you want to learn anything, you know, real estate, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, it was like a very constructive environment. And although, you know, I started learning more about the system, you know, and how the administration works and things of that nature, because the individual that ran it was a superintendent named uh, uh, Brown. And he was more, you know what I'm saying? He was he was with the the, the tradition of the program was program orientated until he ended up leaving. And then a new administration came in and they didn't like that. They didn't like to see dudes. They wanted to see individuals to be savages. They don't want to rehabilitate you in there. Because if they rehabilitate you and you know what I'm saying, and you want and that you don't come back, then they're not gonna have no jobs. That's just their mentality. They were very, you know what I'm saying, envy, you know what I'm saying, and jealous because individuals going to college, dudes were chilling out and doing what they gotta do. And that's I think with the first time I didn't really I knew you was in the building at that time. We had this discussion well, because I was in B3, you were working industry, but we did we crossed paths, but we never really got familiar. So I ended up doing uh, eight years there and then my classification dropped, you know, because at that time, you know, during that transition, you started to see, uh, you know, them, uh, uh, New York State downsize the prison population because mass, and pop mass incarceration started to become, you know what I'm saying, unpopular because they was like, okay, society started to evolve now, you know, so they started to say, okay, these individuals are coming out to prison and you have nothing for them or it's just no good investment to keep an individual in prison all this time and then all of a sudden kick them out to the streets and then he, you know what i'm saying you don't have nothing going on you know and then that's you know and that deals with you know i started learning how the system work how politics work and where i played and my peers played the part in the politics like in the pataki era he just wanted to keep us in there everybody that was going to the board that had 25 years was still getting hit at the board you know, because that was his thing. He wanted to keep the prison filled because it was economic mobility for upstate New York. They don't have nothing up there. The majority of the money comes from out of the five boroughs. You know, the majority of the tax revenues come from out of the five boroughs. So they needed something up there to, you know what I'm saying, to fill the prisons, you know, which was the prisons to give them some economic stuff. Not everybody, not every pilgrim up there owns a farm. So I started seeing all that, you know, as I started, you know, my growth and development started, you know, I was, you know, prison, you know, you know, in prison, it makes you very observant. 
You know what I'm saying? So you start to pay attention. You start to get into, you know what I'm saying? You're reading and you're staying up with current events and stuff like that. And I had a, a mentor up there. His name was V. And he was down with um Baby Sam and them from out of Brooklyn. And um he had V had to the sunburn. I used to work in the Live Live. I met him in Comstock. And you would never think that he had to the sun burn out the way he carried himself, the poise that he had. And I remember I used to, you know, we used to converse and he used to tell me, you know, I used to, you know, hit him with the African knowledge and the knowledge itself. And he used to tell me, he says, yo, all that's good, but you got to study white man history too. Because he used to read autobiography, excuse me, he used to read autobiographies of Benjamin Franklin, Hillary Clinton, you know, he used to give me books to read and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And he and he told me, he said, listen, if you ever leave this jail, Comstock, because they had TVs there, he said, yo, make sure you read the uh, newspaper or make sure you get the Times Magazine and things of that nature because that they keep you abreast. And I used to, you know, and he gave me certain books to read, you know, and then I started to see how America came about, you know, so it made me more conscious to see what was going on and why, you know what I'm saying? I was in the situation that I was in, you know? So I ended up again, going to, to East End and, you know, uh, and I didn't do the industry thing. I, I, you know, I really got my programs up, you know, I started doing a lot of programs, started taking a lot of events and I, and I learned a lot, you know, I learned how to, you know what I'm saying? To do a patent it, cause brothers was in there. They was just doing all constructive stuff. I met brothers in there, Bubba and Boyd and Benji and all of these dudes yeah. were trying to do inventions and stuff like that. And I came about doing the same thing. You know, I was staying abreast with, you know, technology and reading about it and stuff like that and learning how to do patents and stuff like that. And I created yeah. a patent in there. You know, I did a provisional patent in prison, you know what I'm saying? Right in prison. You know, I didn't actually get a chance to do the, the, the you know, turn it into an actual patent because of the money I didn't have. But the experience was rewarding. You There's know, no question. You know, so this I just it, it, you know as I started and more and more in my it, getting to my time, I was more and more constructive. You know, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I did, um, my classification ended up dropping, and you know what I'm saying. 2018, I ended up going to Woodburn, so I get to Woodburn, and you know everything happens for a reason. So, mm -hmm. oh, and by the way, I, you know I. When I was in Easton, while I was in Easton, I used to, uh, we could, quote unquote, I used to get my hustle on. You know, I became like, you know, a jailhouse lawyer. I used to do a lot of motions and stuff like that. I used to do a lot of divorces because, you know, in prison, a lot of dudes behind the wall, they try to get married. No or they question. Before, and they want to get divorces. So Two days you know, later. <laughs> right, shout out to my, bo my boy, Mark Collar. May he rest in peace. You know what no I'm saying? Question. He no question, Mark. You know, and he showed me how to, you know what I'm saying? You know, he's he showed me the forms and stuff like that. And I remember through my first, you know, I, I remember when I did my first divorce, and it was a, a, a young individual brother of mine. He was um his name was Nell. He was uh he was Mexican, you know what I mean? And I did his and trial and I ended up doing it. So that became my hustle. So you know, I learned I, I started learning the skills, you know what I'm saying? Like some skills that I could take, you know what I'm saying, to survive without being in industry and things that like that. I dabbled a little bit into criminal law and stuff like that. But more so, so it was like um, uh, Article 78 and and divorces and things of that nature. You know, dudes catching tickets and, you know, because uh, what I saw about uh, these pilgrims when they wrote tickets, they weren't, um, they didn't know how to write, you know. So, and, you know, and I used to tell them, listen, you go in here, you fight this ticket, whatever the case may be, nine times out of ten, you can get a reversal. If not, you know, the way you line it up, you go outside the courts. And they'll give you a reversal and things of that nature. No question. So I ended up saving some money. I ended up saving from 16 cents, you know what I'm saying, working as a porter. Mm -hmm. I saved up like, in plus hustling, I saved up like maybe 2500 before I left the medium. I mean, before I left the max. I ended up going down to the medium, to Woodburn. And there, um, I ended up trying to find okay i said okay i'm getting close i gotta start getting ready for the board not really not really understanding what that entailed mm -hmm. so i was working in the laundry department and i was working for this civilian and she was uh 
she was like mentally she wasn't too stable she liked to scream on you or whatever the case is and talk to you and i was like to the point you're not going to talk to me like that anybody is not going to talk to me so me and her got into it one time because she screamed on me and police came over there and the police pulled the pin they came running snatched me up and ended up going to the you know what i'm saying going to keep block so i ended up um I ended up getting around it, you know what I'm saying? I got rooting up for threats and, you know, things like that. You know, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting ready to go to the board. Look at this ticket I got. So I'm like, oh, what am I going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So I ended up, you know, going in there. And and I'll never forget that, too. I was with Dale, too, when we was up there. I don't know if you remember Dale. Of course. <laughs> and uh, the hand officer came out. I think they was having a break. And he told me, he said, yo, I don't think I see evidence of threat. So I was like, all right, plea bargain. Right then and there, it was like, okay, let's make a deal. I said, if you drop this, I won't call my witnesses. Because I was going to call witnesses. Because the brother I killed was working there and a couple of other brothers. And they was going to come and testify on my behalf. That's right. So I said, yo, all I ask is you let me, you know what I'm saying, reserve my rights for an appeal. So he did. So he dropped a serious charge, you know what I mean? And just got me for interference. So I was like, all right, good. As long as that's off the record or whatever the case is. So I ended up leaving the leaving the uh, uh, laundry, and then I ended up uh, getting like minute uh, porter work. But I ended up going back into the pace building, and that's where I reconnected with my no, brother E. No question, no question, man. So and I knew you. I heard of your story because I used to see you spending talking with. I met you through Mark. You know what I mean? And yeah, I remember, yeah. I, you know, the word travels. I remember your story, you know, that you had made the board and then they, they revoked your board. You know, they 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 took your uh they took your date back and stuff they like got, that. Yeah. And I want to say that, you know, I, I always, you know, I used to watch you, even though we wasn't, you know what I'm saying, we didn't get familiar yet. You know, I, I, I saw you that you, that you, you had it together. Yeah, you know? yeah, no question. You, you had it together. And then... Then you, you know, we started, you know, we I ended up, you know, I was working for Pace. I was doing the classes and stuff like that. But I used to open up the Pace office in the morning. And that's what because you, you was a Pace member too, you know. And that's then right. that's when it was just me and you in the morning because Jackson and Prem and them was working in the mess hall. Big and, up the Pace prisoners yeah. for AIDS counseling and education. Yes, yeah, very excellent, excellent, excellent program. And that's where you know what I mean we started kicking it and I just want to say to all success you know success after lockdown individuals don't know that you my brother started a movement in there because yeah. you know when we sat there and you started telling me about the situation with the board and, and we started breaking shit down and stuff like that it started I was saying to myself yo I got to get it together because the the parole board is serious this brother here is an example showing me that the parole board is serious i remember you used to we used to bring the tra- your transcripts down we used to go you used right. to go over through it with me and you used to show me yo listen this is where you know a b and c or i made this error here you know what i mean i should have said this like this and this is what happened and then that's when we met face and face started coming down and billy started coming down and everybody just started coming down conversing and every because everybody was getting ready to go to the board and then that's you right. went to the board i kill and mail yeah you everybody up, wanted to come in the office right. with us <laughs> you, ended, you ended you you ended going you ended up going back to the board and you made your board right so i was like wow i was so happy for you man and, and I one thing cool. i and one thing with all humility i always said i'm going home yes because yes, i wanted yes. because i wanted to make sure that was on all of y'all everybody mind yeah, yeah, you never wavered from that. You that's one thing home I say. You, you Don't never, worry. you never wavered from that. You always had in your mind that you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. This is not it. Can't it. Stop you know what I'm saying? That door is gonna us. open. That's right. So because we were we were those men that were doing what we supposed to do as men, you know, in prison. So I knew that nothing could stop us. You know what I mean? And that's why we did more than just kicking it. We did more than kick it, man. <laughs> we, yeah, but we yo, started that movement, bro. <laughs> let me, let me, yo, let me finish. Let me. So you, so you go home, right? So now we down in the down there. So I'm like, yo, listen. I t- the first thing I said, yo, said your face. E is gone. We got to start practicing for these to see these people now. Anybody that doesn't know face, you know what I'm saying? George Hill. You know, shout out to my boy George Hill. The face. face. Big shout out. He went to the board a couple. We're gonna have him on as well, man. He went on to the he he went on the board he was on you know he went to the board a couple of times and he kept getting hit so y'all had that thing in common of getting you know what I'm saying getting denied 
And then that's when Akil came in and that's when we started working on, you know, we started working on each other. We started doing the parole mocks. We started saying things, bringing things down. And I remember we would act like commissioners, you know what I'm saying? And we would put each other in the chair. And I remember when they put me in the chair, they tore me up. I was so torn up by them, my by my two brothers that I went back and I just left out there and I sat down in my room and I said to myself, yo, I got to get my shit together. I'm not ready to go in front of these people. I got a lot of issues that I need to address. Mm. And through the course of that, we started working on it. We started working on it. We started working on it. So we all saw, you know what I'm saying, the things that we needed to critique. Because anybody will tell you, you know what I'm saying, going everybody is everybody going in front of that 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 we call it the hot seat. You know what I'm saying is going to be nervous. Whoever tells you that, you know what I'm saying, they're lying. Yeah, everybody. You think you're not even even the ones that go in back talking. Yeah. They're still nervous. They still they still going nervous. <laughs> yeah. So. And we just started doing the mocks. And then, you know, I mean, it, the dudes, everybody's just started hearing about it. So it started in there with just me facing our kill. Then Uptown came in. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Uptown. And he joined in. Then Real yeah. came in. You know what I'm saying? Because Real, you know, he ended up going to his six months. He ended up getting denied. He ended up coming in. And he said to himself, he sat down and he told his experiences. And and I told, I told Real... That he need to get down there with y'all. <laughs> and he know? and exactly he did That's he right. came down there. He came That's down right. there. Billy came down there. You know how Billy was, but you know, you was there when Billy made it. We, you right. know what I'm saying? And we worked on it with Billy too. You, you know, know, remember we used to have Billy on the lot. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. So I mean, like this movement just started where it was getting so big, we had to transfer from the pace room over to the to the NA and AA room where we had like this big ass seat and dudes were coming down and they wanted to go in there and they wanted to do parole mocks. Facts. So That's eventually right, we uh we went to the board. It was like 30 of us. It was me, face, uptown, rah rah, shout out to Big Bruce, shout out to L. You know, it was a bunch of us that went up there and it was for two days. And and I remember going to the board, man. I had Cruz and this other guy. I forgot his name. And, you know, I made my board, you know. Mm-hmm. I told my story. You know, I told him, you know what I'm saying, you know, where I was in denial at, you know what I'm saying, with my life, you know. I told him, you know, I shouldn't have did what I did regardless if they were drug dealers, you know what I mean, and, I, you know, and, and they saw it. But then, they, you know, they bigged me up because they saw I was very proactive in there. You know, you know, the malehood, the manhood program, you know, the donating the money, you know what I'm saying? Fundraisers and donating to the people for COVID. So I was very proactive, you know, very doing a lot of constructive and positive things. And that's all they kept complimenting me about, you know what I'm saying? You know, so, and And I remember the service field. Right. And I remember leaving out of there feeling like, okay, I got this. So I go downstairs and tell the brothers, I was like, yo, listen, man, because, you know, when I went in front of them, it was like going in front of two brothers from around the way, man. Because they first thing they looked at me, they was like, yo, what happened? Like, you know, they gave me like, yo, yo what happened? You know, it was like, like, like you know what I mean? So it, 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 it made me feel comfortable. That's and right. when I went downstairs and I told brothers, I said, yo, listen, man, we got two, the, two brothers from around the way up there, man. You know what I'm saying? They just, you know what I'm saying? Yo, they giving it up. You just got to, you know what I mean? You just got to let them know what's going on. Because everybody was just like still nervous and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, individuals ended up, you know, everybody ended up making the board. I think the only one that didn't make the board was Rara at that time. But after that, I think COVID had hit. And that's when the uh, they just started mixing up the whole jail. They started kicking individuals out of the, the rooms because they wanted to put dudes that caught COVID in isolation or they sent the dudes to the box and mm-hmm. put dudes in the dorm. But everybody heard about the board and heard about the room everybody was trying yo eat dudes were trying to move into the dorm where me and face was at just so they can do parole marks yeah yeah i mean yo when i say you started a movement my brother you started the movement and the movement is still going on no so question course, that's right there's one brother in there that still has they got the, the ace head. no doubt ace well uh, a rap you know what i'm saying they right. are still holding the torch and they're still doing you know what i'm saying they're still doing the parole marks and because they did, matter of fact, they is going to the board uh, Tuesday. 
You know, and uh, yeah, he calls yeah. me from time. And he calls me. Big up to Day Day. And he's been doing, you know, he's been on his job. <clears throat> he's been on his job and he's been doing what he has to do. And he and he told me, he says, yo, listen, I'm I'm ready. You know, he That's had right. to he had to dig in there. He had to go in there That's and dig right. deep. You got that feeling, you good. Yeah, he had to go That's in there right. and dig deep. You know what I mean? And I had, because you know, again, I was critiquing him. I like I got critiqued, but I was critiquing him by phone. You know, mm -hmm. and more and more as I started hearing him speak, I started hearing him, you know what I'm saying, get better in his confidence and, and, and better with his speaking. No question. Because because when you can say that, I'm ready, that means you know you're going to go in there with some nerves. Don't Absolutely. Don't worry about that. Absolutely. Don't worry and you know about what he told that. me when he said he was ready? It was like when I took my... um. When I took my final exam for one of my classes in school, right? Because I was studying, 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 studying so hard. Like I was, I was in there. I was like, "Yo, come on, let's." I was waiting for the teacher to give me the exam. I'm like, "Yo, come on, give it to me. I want to take it." Let's I was ready go. to go. I wasn't yeah. nervous that I was going, you know. And I ended up getting a 98 out of that. Yeah, yeah. Of you know. So when I knew, I said to myself, "I said, okay." When he told me he said he ready, I said, "Yeah, he got this." Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your transition coming out, man, and what you're doing now, man. What you get into, man. Okay, on so, your release, man. And how was first? Let's talk about how was that day for you, man, when you put your feet on solid ground, man. You know what's interesting, right? Because <laughs> yeah. I was talking to my girl and I was telling her the story and shit. And I was like, I remember I was in the dorm because right then it was around the time I was coming home where COVID was dying down, 2021. And I was still in the dorm and they was like, okay, well, you're going home the next day when they were going to pack me up and put me in a single room. So I'm in a day room and I'm looking out at the courtyard and I'm saying, get a good look at this, B.O. I said, because this is the last scene that you're going to see. You know what I mean? I looked no at question. it real hard. E. I looked at it real hard and I was like, this is it. It's over. And they opened up that gate, that feeling that we all was waiting for. I used to see it on you, man. I used to see it on you, my brother. No I used to see that, you know That's what I mean? Because right, I, I used to up. watch everybody that opened yeah, remember, that, go out that gate. Word, like, yeah, that's one day that's us, man. Period, so I, man. So my mom's, my daughter, and uh, my Cody, you know, shout out to, you know what I'm saying, Woodpecker, Nico Vaughn, you know, he okay. came in. Um, you know, they came and picked me up and they was like, well, what's the first thing you want to do? I'm like, well, I want to go see my son because, you know, he's, uh, you know, you know, he, he passed away in 2017. So and I, we were just getting over a snowstorm and they took me to, um, they took me to his burial site. You know, it's mad snow out there. So we really couldn't put flowers on his, on his, on his burial site. Yeah. And then they took me to get something to eat. And we went to, um, cause you know, you coming down, you come out, come down through Jersey. So we went into like this small restaurant thing and we had like this, um, this booth and my Cody was here. I was sitting here. My daughter was here. My mom's was there. So I had kind of like got up and it didn't really hit me. I got up and I walked and I walked around and I looked and I seen the mall and I was like, wow. I'm like, yo, I'm out here. Yeah. I said, yo, I'm yeah. out here. You know, Long it wasn't no day room. It wasn't no yard. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I'm out here. You know what I mean? So, and then right there, you know, you know, right back down to the, to you know, to the neighborhood, you know. And I just, well, you know, I just, again, you know, that observation, just looking around, looking at everything. And, you know, I didn't see a liquor story thing. I just saw pharmacies. And I was like, wow, why is there a pharmacy on every corner? Mm. So that just, you know what I mean? Raised my eyebrow. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of people, and it's you know what I'm saying it's Medicaid up. And what did you see on TV all the time? All of them talking about take this pill, take that pill. So I started to see what was going on in the neighborhood, the transition of what they were marketing in our neighborhood. Right then, in that first day, I saw what they were doing. Yeah, before exactly. it was the liquor store. You know what I'm saying? Hey. The liquor store on every corner. You know with yeah. the winos. Now was the medication. You That's why I mean? we and we conscious that you know our growth and development allow us to see these things now. So you caught that right away. Exactly. Exactly. And I ain't gonna hold you like two weeks out. You know what I'm saying? I had, you know, I had some some resources, you know, like you know, my moms and all of them when they was there for me and stuff like that. I knew some people in Osborne, you know, and uh, they ended up getting me a job two weeks out. I mean week, week and a half out. I started working for um uh a company called Guardian cleaning the subway train, $20 an hour. 
and I don't forget, we working the 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 the, the graveyard shift from eight to four in the morning. I'm on the FDR drive like this, going up the FDR drive, and I'm saying to myself, "Oh shit, I'm out here going to work. Look at this shit. I'm, you know, I ain't been out here. I'm looking. I'm like, yeah, they got a mall on 115th Street now. We get to the Bronx Southern Boulevard. I'm like, this is Southern Boulevard. I'm like, yo, this shit look, you know, so it look different. You know what I mean? And I've been working ever since. I got a permanent job with Osborne. You know what I mean? And I worked for Osborne, and and then I got back into school. I ended up going back to Bard, you know. And um, nice, nice. I started in 2021, and I just finished it up. I got my associate's degree. Congratulations! That's right. That's right. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Cause we talked about that too, man. Yeah. Before we transitioned yeah. out here, remember you? You already said you was gonna go back to school. You yeah, already so said you was gonna remember. We talked about it prior to being out here, so we prepared. We prepared for these times and look what look at the blessings. And I just saw that it was like resources out there for, you know what I'm saying, to get yourself together. Not only your family resources, but like these re-entry programs, you know, they help you get your thing, get yourself together. You know what I mean? So, you know, with that, I started, you know, just and this networking, because then I started running to a lot of brothers that was in what there was in, and you know, everybody's networking. Yo, I got something over here for you. I got somewhere over. And I always tell Day Day when he come home, I'm like, even though he's going to Albany, or just tell brothers in the five bro, yo, listen, you're gonna be all right if you go home. It's a networking system for 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 us out here. And, you just and, gotta and talk look, in. We we were in prison with 20 plus years, 25, and we knew that it was out there waiting for us before we got out there. That's why we, that's, you know, it was a no brainer for us. We, we remember when we were in there, we used to talk about the brothers that come back and talk about, yo, it's hard out there. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all dudes don't know. It ain't no help. We ain't got no help for us. Formerly incarcerated people. There's a right. whole lot. There's right. a whole lot. You have to break down the door, period. Right. Period. Right. And, 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 you know, and it is individuals, you know, dudes coming home with they're doing that stretch. Dudes is out. I, I, I'm testimonial. I'm telling you from the dude doing the stretch, man, he's out here doing what he got to do, man. Totally, you know what I mean? Man. He's working, you know, and like, like I said, with the re-entry programs and stuff like that, you know, dudes is handling their business and they doing what they got to do, you know, and, and, and that's remember. what I was telling that's what I was telling. So, you know, as I was, you know, conversing back with Day Day and telling him like, yo, listen, man, you know, you know, this it, it's a networking system going out. Face helped me get my first credit, you know, helped me get my first Capital One card. He was breaking shit down about the credit, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. I got my foot, he helped me do the application online, you know. So he helped me do right. my get my permit online. So this is the networking system that well, I was talking about with individuals that we was in there, you know what I mean? We started up, we, we, we did our first LLC together, you know what I mean? Right. So, you know, we was, you know, a lot of the things like, you know, that we were doing in there, you know what I'm saying, is transitioning out there. And then we started yeah. seeing individuals that we knew that did stretches, which is a small percentage, you know what I'm saying, end up going back in there. And then, so the conversation comes back up. Well, how did that happen? Well, how was he, how was he, you know what I'm saying, how was he doing his bid in there? So if he wasn't productive in there, then guess what? He's going to do what he did when, you know what I'm saying, More he's going like to he right. move like he moved. How he moved in there is how he's going to move out here. Absolutely. Absolutely. If and that's the pro, pro If you were proactive in there, if you were proactive in there, when you come out, you're going to be proactive out here. I told Day Day, I said, listen, you're not going to have a problem coming home. I said, you get up four o'clock in the morning every day to go to work. You know what I said? You're a diet cook. I said, yo, that discipline that you have over those years, that is going to carry on with you when you step out. That's right. That's a fact. You know, that's right. That's gonna carry you know, on with you when you, you step and, out. And and only you can only you can slip and fall. You know, nobody nobody can make you slip and fall. Only you can. So so you got the power. You know what I mean? If you want to get it. I said yeah. that's my words every day, man. Every morning to the brother Muhammad. Shout out to Michael Marshall. You know, let's get it Monday, let's get it Tuesday, let's get it Wednesday, let's get it Thursday, let's get it Friday. Every work day, we, we write each other in the morning. Yeah, and my, that's my favorite word. Let's get it. 
So, you know, I, I was familiar with the, the transition out here. You know what I mean? I was I was groomed in by my Cody, by my parents, you know what I'm saying? By my mom, my brother and all that and other individuals, you know, you're listening. It's about credit out here. You got to build up your credit, you know, that cash thing. I keep like maybe $20, maybe at the most in my pocket. That's right. I'm pulling out my credit card or my debit card to do what I got to do to do business. Absolutely. Period. We know I'm trying to we get to that to mark. I'm trying to get That's up right. to the 800 mark. That's right. That's right. Where I'm at yeah. right now. Big up to 800, the 810. Big up to 810. You know, it's going to 850 with the misses. No question. But um, definitely, yo, listen, I think we prepared for this, man. We I don't think I know we prepared for this. Yeah, we, we talked did. about we talked about making sure our credit was good when we were in there. We took before we came home. We did all this with preparation, man. Preparation is key. So, so that's you know that allowed me to see what's the primary issue here with progressing. You know what I mean in life with progress, and that's preparation, man. So, so and and if you prepare, and that means you exercising patience and discipline. Mm -hmm. That's key. That's key to our success, man. And so that's why we all, not we all, but most, but most of all, we, you know, we can, we can count those blessings and, and we can show our own success in our own right. Because exactly. we all, we all on, 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 uh, you know, different paths in life, but we, it, just like we, it, we come full circle, we meet mm -hmm. up at the same place all the time, you know? Yeah. So, you know, so, so you know, I got my my second LLC. You know, with my uh, with my girl. You know, me. We got we sell online products. You know, we buy wholesale, sell retail, nice. and you know, we just trying to build a business credit. You know what I mean? We just got a. I just got approved from Chase a three thousand dollar business credit. You know, so we're just trying to build nice. up. We're trying to get up that capital. You know what I mean? Because you know, I got things that you know that I'm trying to accomplish. You know. No question. No question. I got my That's degree. You know, I'm on. You know, I'm um I'm. I'm Straddling to see if I want to go for the, the for the for the BA, you know what I'm saying? I just you know school and work was a lot for the last two years, so yeah. right now I'm just like you know unwinding right now. No so, question, and you deserve yeah, to make the, the decision yeah. you make. Whatever right. decision you, you know, make is gonna be a good one. <laughs> you know, so right now I'm I'm working and uh you know I'm just trying to build up my small business right now. Absolutely, absolutely, no question. Stay busy, man. man. Staying busy. That's what we do, man. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. You know, I definitely um at some point too would like to have uh, uh me, you, and face on. You know, just just to have a conversation, man. Because this is what we do, man. We we haven't um we haven't been together yet. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting you say that because I talked to Real too, and I talked to Real. I said, yo, listen, we need to go on E's show. We need to, it's, he needs to hear that movement that he started from that. Y'all hearing it from me today, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But to hear from Akil, to hear from Face, to hear from Real, you know what I'm saying? To hear from Boss, you know what I'm saying? No question, the movement no that you started in there, you know? And no that, question, you know, uh, hopefully, like, and then I say, like, the torch is still passed down. It's brothers in there still doing what you started well, we, yeah, no in question there. absolutely shout out absolutely. to you my brother man shout outs to you man because uh, you know if it wasn't for you man i don't think you know i'm not saying you know i i, I wouldn't have been in a better standing that i was in preparation to go to that boy you know and no it just in, in general with a lot of the other guys that was in there you started that movement my brother no question man appreciate that's, it too. that's success after lockup no question no <laughs> doubt that's right absolutely for real man and we came far we came far but we ain't finished you heard we yeah. not finished <laughs> we just starting facts we just starting so we definitely gonna see that full circle this that's this whole conversation because i'm i look to get in touch with face you know as well as real boss we all we, we all could be on and just talk man conversate we ain't do that yet out here yeah, we have a reunion out here. We'll have one though, sooner, sooner or later. It doesn't matter. We here. We in the wow. building. <laughs> you can't, you can't stop the movement. You know, it's here to stay. 
No, no. Yeah, man. But again, shout outs. I love the show, man. I love what you're doing. I was there when you put it in, you know what I'm saying? When it went from, you know what I'm saying, from your brain out, you know what I'm saying, speaking it to me, you know what I mean? And I was no like, question. I'm just proud of you that you know what I'm saying, that you got to go, you know, that you materialized it, man. No doubt. I'm, I'm proud to see all of us home now, too. Yeah. You know, most of yeah. us. <laughs> most they they of ain't us. H, man. They, they ain't only, H. That's they right. Go, it's they only they a couple left. Days. Yeah, it's only a couple couple of us left that you know, but they coming. I already they already know, you know, they day is numbered, they coming, they definitely coming with us. You know, uh we definitely gotta do this again, B.O. Yeah, know, facts. We, we, for real, facts. we definitely do, man. Facts. We already stay in touch. Yeah. So you know, anytime tell you come down, man, I'll take you lunch, dinner. You know how no you do when you come through. <laughs> no question, man. We definitely, definitely gotta do this again, you know. Um so you know, before we close this out too, man, this this stage, you know, I, I want to tell you, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you know the time, you know, I appreciate your story because this, I think this is gonna help, uh, you know, a lot of people that see this in society, just the stereotype that society have about formerly incarcerated men and women. Yeah. You know, this this platform was created to show society brothers and sisters like yourself and myself and us not only staying home but we staying home with a purpose we giving back to the community we giving back to society in a positive way now so you know i want to i want to thank you you know just just for that man and, and seeing seeing life through man and with, with your growth and development and where you at today you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of everything you do. Every time I hear you, 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 you got a new adventure when you started. You, you got things going, and you stayed on top. And I think you stayed on top because of, because of our unification with yeah. us staying in touch with each other. When yeah. I say us, I mean you and I. You know what I'm saying, Ace? Everybody, I, I kill face all of us we all stood stand we stood tall and, yes. and stood in our square and yes. made sure that we got it done and we getting it done so yes, i want to definitely are. no question appreciate that um if you if you have anybody you want to shout out or you want to you know uh, uh put out there man how people could get in touch with you the g miller county thing you know what i mean um to share your story because we we definitely gonna send you a copy of this too to put put out wherever you want to put it out we definitely gonna push it in all our social media streams all right well definitely again shout out to you and you know your success or success after lockdown and um i'm just happy that you know what i'm saying that i you know help with the you know your mission you know what i'm saying because i was there when it you gave birth to it right there you know um shout out to all the comrades man you know no question shout out to all the comrades that's networking you know what i'm saying that's you know you know, networking with other brothers and, you know what I'm saying, helping them, you know what I'm saying, with this transition out there. Shout out to all the re-entry organizations out there. And, you know what I'm saying, shout out to the brothers that's still behind the wall, the ones that we're still reaching out to, the ones that we're still helping, you know, prepare them, you know what I'm saying, that's not forgotten that we're helping, you know what I'm saying, for this next, for this transition so they can make it back out here, you know what I'm saying, to, they, to their families and their loved ones. No question. And I got one more question for you. Like, what would you say to the brothers and sisters that's left behind, you know, and they and transitioning back out here to society? What I would say to them is that make sure that you, you know what I'm saying, that you have a, you know, that you have your goal, your goals and your plans and don't be the uh, apprehensive or scared if you don't have, you know, uh, personal resources because you have those reassurances and you have those organizations out here that's what is going to help you get on your feet. You know, I just ran into a brother that just came home named Africa. He just touched down. I saw him down there with, where I work at. And, you know what I'm saying? I just networked with him. He said it's a little struggle, but it, it's better off being in there. And he's, you know what I'm saying? He's, you know, but he's taking those steps. You know, Give Africa my at. information too, man. Give okay. Africa my info. Tell him okay. call me. All right. Yeah, he just yeah he just he just getting the transits. He just learn how you know learning how to use that phone and stuff like that. So yeah, I know yeah. he probably got in touch with Bu already too. Okay, that, that was his boy. So Bu always asked me about him too. Yeah, but but definitely, man. 
You know what I mean? I appreciate that, man. I appreciate those words, man. So I don't have nothing. I don't have, you know, uh, uh, nothing else to say. What say, you know, to follow those words. I definitely, I'm definitely gonna uh, 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 stay in touch, and we're gonna do this again sooner than later. All you right, know, I brother. might call you. I might call you on a weekend or something. I'm gonna give you a little break. I'm gonna give you a little yeah. break up the air. But yo, we definitely got to get back with face on here, man. Just yes, talk. yes, just yes. Have yes. our conversation. That's all we yes. do. Yes. This ain't, you know, they say nothing scripted. We having a conversation, man, about our lives, man. Our as we always do. As we always so did. We right. Do. That's right. That's right. Facts. That's, right. That's a fact. You know. We just doing that, it outside the wall now. You know, successfully. That's right. No doubt. With that, man. Happy New Year's to yeah. you and your family. From Same my to you, family to yours, man. And and uh and stay in touch. Yes. As always. One, my right? brother. So yes. with that, I'll say success after lockdown. Your boy EB, my boy B.O. Gil Lewis, Peace. and we out. Peace.